hi guys welcome back in today's video we're gonna look at how to analyze and design a continuous RC beam uh, yeah, a continuous RC beam member so I'm just gonna go straight to the video I'm gonna select I'm gonna go to TEDS which I already opened previously and uh, I'm just gonna click here open under the home tab right so based on uh, the previous so based on previous projects that I've done uh, I'm just gonna select one of them just to av avoid uh, predefining the loading settings that I need so I'm just gonna click on open so this is one of them so instead of working on this since I don't want to jeopardize uh, my previous uh, my previous activity I'm just gonna click on duplicate and uh, what that does it, it gives me a new a new documentation so I'm just gonna close this and I'm gonna straight on work with this one so I'm gonna right click calculate right so this window pops up right so now um, there's this project that I've been working on and uh, it's a typical residential building and uh, I'm just gonna pick on this particular beam that is running along a grid line A. So basically, this is a continuous, uh, a continuous beam. And uh, as you can see here, I've already defined the loading pattern through the yield line method. So this is usually one of the ways in which uh, structural engineers use when they're defining their loading patterns. Right. So. I'm just gonna click on this so basically this line is uh, the effective width and uh, as you can see here it's 2.2 meters and uh, the positioning of the effective width is 2.2 meters from the start of the beam so that is that I'm gonna go to TEDS go to geometry straight on right so I'm gonna define the length so when you look when we look at this floor plan here uh, for span one, its length is 4,400 millimeters, which is 4.4 meters. So, right, I'm gonna define that 4,400. So that is okay. I'm gonna click on add span 4,400, which I believe is the same. So, for span two, span one, span two, they will have similar span, similar span lengths. So that is finished I'm just gonna wait okay fine so now uh, just to check everything is set so maybe here I'm just gonna reduce that to 450 click OK material details yes so concrete class C2025 now I remember on my previous video on a simply supported beam uh, for the C2025 I remember saying the 20 being the maximum aggregate size actually the 20 is uh, the compressive cylindrical strength of concrete so if you're very much familiar with the euro code so these are some of the concrete classes that you'll be defined with so that, that you'll find so for the C2025 so 20 is the cylindrical strength and 25 is the cubic strength and since uh, our beam has that uh, cubicle kind of shape we're gonna go for 25 newtons per square millimeters which the software would actually calculate from right so for the characteristic yield strength um, yeah for my basically whenever I'm doing my designs I usually like uh, putting 460 uh, so basically this is according to what the BS recommends but uh, well I can say it's a bit conservative because uh, nowadays when you look at the type of reinforcements which we use on site they actually tend to have a very high yield strength because I remember the time I went uh, for one of the workshops in some one of the steel fabrication farms and uh, the yield strength was actually very much performing it was going at figures of 550 so here being a bit conservative 
which I'll compensate with that when uh, when it comes to the beam design and checking the utilization ratio. So like when I'm checking, well, okay, I'm just going to skip for that. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to compensate for this. So I'm going to click OK. Right. So for these other settings, I don't need to go through them since uh, I already defined them in my previous video. Right. So now for the loading, I'm just going to clear all this out leaving the self-weight. So for the self-weight uh, option, basically what this does is going to automatically calculate the self-weight of the full length of the beam. Right. So for span 1, when I go back to my floor plan, I can see the effective width 2.2 meters and its position is 2.2 meters from the starting point. So this is for span 1. Right. So from calculating the dead load, I'm going to start with the self weight of the uh, of the slab which is 24 multiplied by its thickness 0 0.15 so that gives me 3.6 plus uh, partition loading over let's say 3 kilonewtons per square meters and a finishing load of 1.5 kilonewtons so I get a total of 8.1 this 8.1 is what I'm going to multiply with the effective width which is 2.2 Right. Yeah, I already know the total dead load, 8.1 multiplied by 2.2. So that's 17.82. So 17.82, just gonna click add load. So remember, instead of going to beam, we're gonna focus on each and every individual span. So for span one, so instead of a UDL, uh, when you look at this loading pattern that I've defined here. This is what we call the trapezoidal loading pattern. So for that, I'm going to go straight back to TEDS, change this loading type from UDL to a trapezoidal load. And my load as we got 17.82 kilonewtons per meter run. For the position, so I'm going to take uh, 2200 since that is where the maximum effective width is located. So the same I'm gonna do that right so when you when you look at this uh, when you look at this window here you can see the loading pattern is similar to the one that I defined here on the floor plan so I'm gonna click on that right so for the imposed loading is gonna be more or less the same loading pattern as the one for death so instead of uh, defining the positions all over again what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to select this, the dead load case, click on copy, paste, and uh, it gives me the same uh, configurations that I did. So the only difference I'm going to do is change from dead to enclosed. I'm going to go to my calculator. So 1.5 kilometers per square meter is uh, according to... The, the live load that is required for a residential building uh, that is according to BS 6399 so 1.5 multiplied by the effective width which is 2.2 so that gives me a total of 3.3 .3 kilometers per meter run so I'm going to click OK so for span 2 when you look at uh, the floor plan here it more or less has a similar span as span 1 and just to check the effective width is also the same so from the starting point 2.2 effective width 2.2 meaning uh, the load carried by span 2 is similar to the load carried here at span 1 so I'm just gonna go back to TEDS and again instead of defining the loading cases I'm just gonna hold my control hold my control key select those two click copy Go to span to paste. So the good thing with that, of course, it uh, saves you time whenever you're doing this uh, analysis. There's no wait. Okay, right. So now for the combinations, I'm just gonna clear this one out. Right. So in this window, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm 
going to define the loading configurations let me put it that way so what this does is uh, it gives me the option to basically instruct uh, the software to give me the worst case loading scenario so I'm, I'm just gonna check on these two click OK and uh, when you look at this configuration one this is a scenario where the full length of the beam is fully loaded when I go for configuration 2 that's give me a scenario of where only span 1 is fully loaded but span 2 it's only the self weight so basically there's no particular loading here and uh, for loading configuration 3 the vice versa where the span 2 is fully loaded but uh, span 1 it's only the self weight of the beam so the beauty about that of course it's uh, you know it gives you a worst case loading scenario and uh, I believe that's a very powerful element when you're considering this uh, loading analysis. So I'm going to click on OK. Oh, and before I just click OK, I'm just going to check my uh, loading factors, the partial safety factors, yeah, 1.4, 1.6, so that's OK. The same 1.46, that's fine. So I'm going to click OK. Right. So I'm going to start designing the beam, support A. No reinforcement required. So two twelves. So minimum two twelves. Two sixteens. But uh, yeah, it's two hundred and sixteen. So two sixteens would be a, a bit conservative. So I'm gonna change that from two sixteen to twelves, right? So that's okay. The minimum share reinforcement. That's fine. Span one. Yeah, so no reinforcement required, so 212s. Again, 233s, so 216s, that's okay. So again, if you go back to my previous video, Simply Supported, I'm just uh, going to utilize the reinforcement provided here at the span for support A as well. So instead of 212s, I'm just going to put 216s. Click OK. Support B. Reinforcement required. Let's just check from here 348 so 216 should be good yeah 216 is okay 216 is bottom from uh, from the span one share reinforcement support b span one so this is towards span one two eights at 250 support b two eights at 250 so that's okay so span two two twelves 216s, 8s at 250s, so that's okay. Support C, I'm just gonna change that. So instead of 216s, I'm gonna put 212s and I'm gonna leave it as that 216s just for continuity purposes, right? So, just a quick tip um, the reason I go for 212s, well, basically. Um, this is this is usually the recommended uh, or rather the minimum bar diameter you'd use because uh, there's this uh, uh, there's this type of loading known as accidental loading and basically what accidental loading does is uh, it tries to identify a particular scenario where uh, a particular section of the building goes to an, a type of loading where let's say there's an a, there's a gas explosion and uh, you see with the with the gas explosion what normally happens is uh, it tends to have it tends to affect the entire structure of the building so for us to prevent that disproportionate collapse we need to provide uh, a time force of at least 75 kilonewtons and uh, when you calculate 212s basically you multiply the area by uh, the the yield strength uh, divided by the partial safety factor. So when you do that, it should give you a time force of at least more than 75. So let's just go through that. So we have 212. So that's 226 multiplied by the 460 that I gave. But uh, I'm not going to go for the 460, so I'm going to go for the 500. Since I know the type of bar that will be used is a ribbed, is a deformed type B, which is a ribbed section. 
So 226 multiplied by 500, that gives me 113,000, divide by partial safety factor of 1.15. So 98, 260, divide by, uh, that should be 1,000. Yes, so because you're changing from newtons to kilonewtons. So that's 98.26. So that's already sufficient. So I'm safe. So I'm going to click OK. Hit finish. Just going to wait for the software to generate the results. Right. As you can see, the analytical results we get here. The, the predefined loading. So you get your moments, your shear forces, your cross sections, your beam reinforcement detailing. So just gonna go through, quickly go through. Yeah, pass, pass. Everything is passing as I can see. The deflection is check, pass, pass, pass. Yeah, and pass. So we're on the green light right well thank you so much for your time um, please do like and subscribe my channel as it gives me a lot of support when i um, just trying to help out people out there especially maybe the graduates who are getting into the field and uh, do share amongst your friends thank you